Hello, hello, hey Jill. I wanted to talk about manifesting real quickly and a technique that really, really works. A technique that worked for me getting this particular house that I'm standing in. Hey, crazy. Thank you for being here. And I wanted to share this with you because it's real easy. It is no sense of you worried about anything that you don't have in a physical reality because you could have it if you put your mind to it. So you gotta be willing to put your mind to it every day though. So it's gonna take 10 minutes out of your day, every day, until this thing hardens into the physical reality. Always a gift catching you on the live. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, same here, babe. So here we go. So in manifesting this particular home, I use the law of assumption. So I want to teach you the technique of using it real simple where you will not have to go through all of the bumps in the road. You could get straight to the point of getting the thing that you want in the physical reality. Hey, newbie and goddess, thank you for being here, babe. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our senses. I'm going to tell you exactly what I did every night from August 29th up until I walked into this home that I had never seen before on November 11th of last year. That's how long it took me. Yours might take um, a shorter time than mine. It depends upon whatever, it depends upon whatever you have in there as res resistance, how you release the resistance and allow and how you just could mentally live in the end as if you already have this thing, right? So this is what I did. Before I went to bed, y'all ready? Y'all listening? So you said what you wanted every day. I thought about it every day. Y'all listening? I'm not going. I'm not going forward until y'all let me know y'all here. Now they got too many people up in here. I asked y'all how y'all doing. Nobody can't say hey or nothing. Is anybody here? You here? <laughs> y'all want to hear this? Y'all want this information? Oh, okay, okay, okay. There are people up in here. There we go. Okay. All right, hi, hi, well, all right, all right, people here. So this is what I did. It's really, really easy. Hey, love, how you doing? Thank you for being here. We definitely listening, good, perfect, perfect. Before you go to bed, if you have a partner, your children, they gotta not, you gotta clear the energy of them. They, the children gotta be in the bed, the partner gotta know that you about to do something mentally and you about to go to sleep to clear your mind, right? You lie there in your bed using your human imagination and you use your five senses as if you are in that place. For me, for example, I li I'm lying down in my bed and I imagine myself walking barefoot on these floors that I'm standing on right now. As I was walking barefoot, I felt the cold, the you know, the temperature for my feet being on the floor, being cold, right? I'm walking. Mind you, I'm laying down in the bed with my eyes closed. I'm using my first eye to experience this. I jumped into this in my imagination like I'm playing make-believe, right? I played make-believe and I walked into my kitchen. These cabinets right here, that's where I was going. So I'm in my imagination going to these cabinets right here using my human imagination, right? When I open the cabinet, I smell this wood. So I've already touched my floor. That's one of my senses. I smelt this wood another sense i saw the beauty of my home already right that's another sense then with my human imagination i touched and grabbed and ate i ate a fresh banana a fresh fruit or whatever you like to eat that was on your counter some chips or whatever in my human imagination, I'm using all of my senses, right? To see it, to taste it, to, to touch it, to smell it, 
the hear it so I can hear the cabinet open. I can hear the refrigerator open. You have to create an imaginary scene that you are there now, right? And so when you create the imaginary scene using all of your senses as if you're there now, <laughs> your subconscious mind doesn't know if this is real or not. Then you, your subconscious mind is wide open at this point of time because it's drifting off into different brain wavelengths where it's absorbing everything, right? Where it's right there at the theta stage, right there at the alpha stage, right there, ready to absorb. This is a very precious time for creation where you should be thinking about whatever it is that you want, but you gotta use all five senses still, right? After I did that, what I begin to do is think of a person who I love that I know loves me back and they were telling me how happy they were, how proud of me they were of me for getting my home that I desired. So this could be your husband, this could be your mother, this could be your children, this could be your close friend. And imagine them telling you, oh man, I feel so proud of you. And looking at you with that proud look on their face. And now you hug them, you embrace them, and you milk the embrace. And you tell them, thank you, I'm so happy too. Thank you for being happy for me. All of this stuff that you're doing is in your human imagination, right? You do this at night before you drift off to sleep. You try to do it at least three times. So if I'm laying in the bed, imagining a house, I'm imagining walking in my carpet, doing this scene to go to the kitchen to smell the cabinets or whatever it is, to eat something because I gotta taste it, you know? And to experience this thing three times and then I'll drift off to sleep right when I wake up in the morning I will repeat this same act in the morning I'm gonna repeat this act before I get out of bed before I check TikTok before I let the family know that I'm woke I gotta repeat this act because I'm still in the same brain wavelength of the subconscious mind being able to absorb new information, being able to trick it to make it think that I already have a house. And so now the subconscious mind has to yield this to me in my physical reality. You getting this here? You do this every night, every morning. Now then during the day, just randomly during the day, if you're on your lunch break or something at work, you think about it. And you just say, I feel so happy I have my new home. As if you have it already, you just, just one little thought. You don't have to do the imaginary um, thing during the day. Just one little thought. I'm so thankful for my new home. I'm so excited for my new home. Ignore the fact that you don't have it in the physical reality. Because the physical reality has to conform or yield to you. And what you're seeing right now in the physical reality is an example of your old thoughts from your old subconscious program. Last night, you just reprogrammed your subconscious mind so it could give you something different. So the physical reality that you see, it's your lag, it's your old thoughts. So don't let it bring you down. You have to stick to doing this for an appointed time. The point in time for you might be a couple of months, might be one day, might be a week. Nobody knows how much of re resistance you have up in there. But if you hold steady to doing this, whatever you're doing it with, it has to transform. It has to come forth. It has to, it is law. It is law of assumption. It is the reason why I'm standing on these floors it is the reason why these cabinets back here that I once smelled up in here is right here. Because this is your superpower, God. You can be, do, or have anything that you put your mind to, God. And this is the key. 
Now, if you sit up there and do that at night and in the daytime, you're like, oh, I'm doing something this lady with some breads and a headset to do. And I don't know if this crap works. I'm going to try it, and I, but I'm going to doubt it. And I don't believe in myself and I'm worried and, and I don't know. And, and all this questioning city, stupid stuff in physical reality, you just messed up your manifestation. So you have to believe because it's according to your belief. Now, the doing it at night and in the morning is helping you get there, your quantum jumping there. But if you don't believe you jumped there and experienced it and come back in the physical reality doubting it every day, then baby, I can't help you. You might as well go ahead on and just stay in your little rut forever. It's okay if you want to stay not having that thing that you have on your mind. It's okay if you create resistance for that thing. That's your choice. But if you want it, you better believe in it. You better act like you have it already. You just walk around just knowing. And so the day that I walked up in that door, that's how I knew this is my house. This is my house. How did I know? Because I touched them. I smelt them cabinets already. I touched them floors already. This is home and nobody can tell me that it is not mine. You can do this with relationships. You can do this here with money. You can do this with a job. You can do whatever, anything you want. That's your superpower. Let me read some of these comments to see if I'm, if y'all with me on this here. Okay, we definitely listen. Hello from Jersey. Okay, hi. Good afternoon. That's a real yeah, babe. Yeah. Hey, Epic. Thank you for being here. Hey, dear. Yes. Manifest. Thank for your smell. Yeah. Claim it and own it. Yes. Alicia know this already. Yeah. Say for the people in the back. Yes, girl. I love it. <laughs> yeah so that's it you might think it's so simple but it works it works with anything what stops it is the fact that your subconscious mind gonna work on you while you're trying to do this here it's gonna tell you because the subconscious mind really is a beautiful thing that it tries to protect you and keep you in alignment to what you consciously believe in it'll be like oh well no she, she lives at her, at her old address. What is she thinking about this here for? Tell her to stop. Tell her to stop. Make her stop. And so then you'll get these little thoughts about, oh, this ain't going to work. Um, why am I doing this? Or it'll even make you forget it. But even if you have to put a little sticky note on your headboard in your bedroom before you go to bed to remind yourself to do it, keep on doing it. Keep on persistent. Even if you go to sleep, when you did it only one or two times already, you go to sleep, that's okay. You had it on your mind. You can't get the thing wrong. The drifting off stage is the most precious stage for, stage for manifestation. <laughs> it takes people the longest to figure this out. People pay money trying to figure this here out about themselves and I just gave it to you. So use it. Use it to draw whatever it is you want to draw. So let's say, let me use another example. Let's say it is a yacht, you know, let's say it's like millionaire status, like, right? So it's a millionaire status, you know, everybody wants to seemingly be a, a millionaire. <laughs> so let's say it's about, it's dealing with money. So now you're, you're on the yacht that you want to be on, that you like, if you're into that kind of thing. Imagine you have a butler, now this butler is bringing you, maybe you like beer, wine, champagne. They're bringing you some champagne, you sip your champagne, you to taste something. You to smell the, the, the um, healing microbes of the, of the air from the ocean breeze through your nostrils. You feel the sun on you. You can, you can touch the, the champagne glass. You know, you there, milk in the moment. So in that case, if you're like a millionaire, let's say, for example, you have guests or your family on there. You just, you had some big, you imagine you have some big shorts on and you have $10,000 in each, on each um, band. You know how they band up the $100 bills at the bank? You have about 10 of them in your pocket, right? And just imagine that all your family is on the boat with you and it is nothing for you to go in your pocket and you give them a band of $10,000, right? And each family member that you go to embrace, they look at you and they be like, man, you made it. You saved the family. 
You know, thank you. I'm so proud of you. And they're looking at you like you're the wealthiest person. You're the luckiest person in the world. You see this through their eyes and you milk that moment and you walk by one, one each member, one by one by one and give them a hug and bless them with $10,000. If that's what you're desiring. More money and more finances, right? You do this every day, morning and night. And during the day, you can't be stingy with money. You can't be, you can't be, oh, I'm just trying to make it to Friday, but I was last night, I'm trying this manifestation thing out. Don't do that to yourself. Don't play yourself like that. In the daytime, you have to believe money flows to me effortlessly. I'm a millionaire. I can be, do, or have anything. I am riches, I am wealth, I am wellness, I am whole. Money does grow on trees. It is a tree of life that is deeply rooted in my subconscious mind. The tree of prosperity that's deeply rooted inside of me. The tree of abundance that's deeply rooted inside of me. And my tree is bringing forth good fruit. You have to think the positive during the day. That's it, that's it. And the reason why, see, see, the thing about it is in the biblical text, it says, I take the foolish things to confound the wise. They got people in the physical reality that will tell you, you got to work hard like a Hebrew, Israelite, or slave, or whatever you want to call it, or like Papa did when he had to walk in the snow and all of that, or get your ass beat, or you just got to be a soldier, and you got to go through this long suffering. Those people, they, 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 attain the things that they wanted the hard way by doing when you came forth in physical form before you jumped into this avatar suit you said that you were gonna be you were gonna come forth to explore and be it in order to draw it to you so this is the easier way where you ain't gotta work hard you just gotta work smart with this mind you just gotta let a new mind be in you and it'll be you are a magnet so you, your power, your superpower is the fact that you have the ability to draw things to you. Not repelling money away from you. Not making the house not come. No, that's you creating resistance, God. That's you not feeling worried, God. That's you doubting yourself, God. Because even in the biblical text, it tells you all you have to do is have faith as a, as a grain of mustard seed to be able to move mountains, God. So it shouldn't be that you can't obtain with no house, no car, no good credit, no whatever it is that you want. If you want it, put it on your mind. Because right now in your physical reality, your physical reality is telling everybody, including yourself, especially yourself, what's been on your mind. That's what your physical reality is designed to show you, what's on your mind. This has been on my mind. Day in and day out from August 29th to November 11th when I walked up in here, this was on my mind. My life is showing me what was on my mind. What do you have to show for what is on your mind? If it's shitty, change your mind. It is as simple as that. Change your mind for the things that you're wanting. Give attention to the things that you're wanting and it'll grow for you. That's the tool. That's it. It's easy and you can do it. You can do it. Let's see. It works. This is a fact. Yes, brown sugar, it does. I missed it. Hey, A King. Hey, Emperor. Thank you for being here. Oh my God, my, you look good. Oh, thank you, babe. I appreciate you. Hey, Mayo. Thank you for being here, babe. Hey, 888. I shake. I shake. I am so excited. Oh, you doing mentorship? <laughs> There go another person that asked me about mentorship. I do consultations on my website. If you click on my picture, and go to my website and scroll to the bottom. I do personal consultations and we can talk about it there. Life Yonder says, thank you. You are so welcome. So somebody, one person said that they missed it. All I'm saying is use your five senses before you drift off to sleep. When you wake up in the morning, touch it, taste it, smell it, live in the end. Use your human imagination for whatever it is that you are wanting. You have to put it on your mind in the morning and at night. During the day, don't doubt the thing. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. 
You got to walk into that thing. If it's a car, you got to start that thing up. You got to hear the car. You got to smell that new car scent. You got to take it for a drive. You got to pump some gas in it all in your human ima imagination while you laying down in the bed. That's it. That's it. You just got to be consistent with it though until it show up. You can't give up on that thing. Being consistent with it is equivalent to you getting some momentum, some energy. All of this thing is about energy. You know, even in re religion, it's about energy. When praises go up, blessings go down. I mean, come down, right? You're praising God for a blessing. You you tapping, you're doing a tangerine, you're shouting and stuff. You're conjuring up energy. If you were a witch, dark magic or light worker, it don't even matter. All you're doing is casting a spell or conjuring up energy to invoke certain energy is no different here in spirituality with the law of assumption all you're doing is conjuring up energy you gotta think about it okay i thought about it last night i gotta think about it some more Ooh, it's getting stronger let me think about it some more Ooh, i'm conjuring up energy let me think about it some more i'm gonna, I'm gonna think about it in the morning and i'm gonna think about it in the, at night that's gonna be a whole lot of energy then if i in the daytime just briefly just jump over that quantum jump there and be thankful for it already as if i have it right now oh okay that's a little bit more energy all it is is you conjured up energy, baby. And once the energy gets really, really powerful, so to speak, really, really giant where water bursts, maybe like a, a cloud, you know, like when a cloud is trying to rain and then the cloud is just ready to release the rain, that's divine timing. That's when your energy has reached its peak and now you're being showered upon. Whatever it is, your manifestation is just ready for you and you can get showered upon for your blessing because you conjured up enough of energy to make it just bust. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, that's how you conjure up the energy on it. Yeah, you're welcome, babe. Okay, I will check it out. You're welcome, no problem. So that's the video, that's it. There's no reason why in the next 30 days for some of you, the next week for some of you, the next 90 days for some of you, that you're still in the same rut. Because if you think about it in the physical reality, everything regrows. We get a new freaking stomach lining in three days. Our nails, I had them little fake nails on me, my nails uh, broke underneath. They're gonna grow back. My skin, my skin, you know, our skin, your skin, everybody's skin sheds and we get new layers of skin. You arch your eyebrows, you get new hair follicles growing right there. Everything in your body has the ability to change and grow back. <laughs> Why is your life not changing? Why are you still sick? <laughs> Why are you still doubting? Why are you still living paycheck to paycheck? Because your ways ain't changed nothing. Because you decided to stay there even though your mind wanted you to grow. Even though you said before you came forth in physical form that you were coming forth to evolve. To remember who you are and there was no way that you would get it wrong. That's what you said before you came forth. You came to remember and enjoy the journey. But if you sitting there and you are free flowing energy and you vibrating on the same frequency, you're not evolving. You're not remembering. You're not doing what you said that you were going to do. And oftentimes that means leaving the people behind that have that mindset where they just okay with being sick, okay with being broke, okay with being in the lack. Because that's not what you're okay with. <laughs> it shouldn't be. Yeah. Okay. I'm new here. Question Is it good to meditate in the morning? I really don't have time, first thing. It is perfectly good in the morning and at night. Those are the two important times. If you don't have time to do it on one end, I, first of all, I would say wake up earlier. It's only a 10 minute thing at least that you have to give energy to. I would say wake up earlier because that's how important it is. I was about to say just do it at night, but no, no, wake up earlier. It ain't about you going in for no 30 minutes, five to 10 minutes. You could even, you could meditate on the toilet in the morning. When you go urinate first thing in the morning, you could sit there on the toilet. You're still in this brain wavelength. Why waste this, um, this, this alpha and theta brainwave frequency that's wide open to your subconscious mind and don't put nothing in it? Do it on the toilet. Take a long pee. 
Take a five minute pee. <laughs> I'm so serious. Why you urinating on that toilet? You think about what it is that you're wanting. You touch it, you taste it, you feel it. You imagine that you're there. You're quantum jumping while you're on the toilet, okay? Since you're so busy. Since you can't lay down and be still and know that you're God. You do it on the toilet. Do it in your car when you're in the parking spot at, at the job. You know, do it. Do it in your closet when you're picking out your clothes. Yeah, do it then. Do it when you're in the shower. Yeah, you don't have to necessarily be laying down with your eyes closed. All you have to do is be able to take some deep breaths, calm your body down, and get into that state of being. That's what it's really all about. You can take a deep breath on the toilet. While you're picking out your clothes, you can, you can take a couple of deep breaths. Yeah. And imagine that thing, oh, my house, my car, my health, my job, whatever it is that you're wanting. You can, you can take a deep breath and get there. It don't take long. Just get there. And don't, take, don't, don't, don't make no excuse like that for yourself. Because this is your life. This is your journey. You make an excuse for that thing that you're trying to say that you don't have time because of. Make an excuse for that. Make an excuse for that job that will replace your ways <laughs> if you come in too many times late. Make an excuse for that. Make an excuse for, you, you know, whatever it is that's stopping you from putting yourself first. Because you should come first, God. You should come first. You should be on a throne. And the most important thing about you being on a throne is lifting yourself up. So you must lift yourself up. You must... Put that in the care in the schedule for you. Not pencil it in, pin it in. Because that's something you gotta do every day. That has to do with your soul. So no, no, no. Tell that other thing. No, I ain't got time for you. I gotta make the 10 minutes for me. That's important because I used to sleep on that. But see, the thing about it is I got tired of sleeping on that part. I hear, you know, I used to hear, you know, you, you gotta meditate. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I wasn't doing it for an important time. But I tell you one thing, when my home in New Orleans, Louisiana was destroyed again and I was tired, I was like, oh no, this don't be the last time I'm going in. And when I got in, when I went in, I went in looking at this. And I didn't give up on looking at this because in my physical reality, I had a fence that was knocked down. I had a hole in the roof. They had water coming through the ceiling fan. I had a green swimming pool in the backyard. And so every morning when I woke up, hell with looking at that shit, I was going to look at this house right here. Because that made me feel good. See, when, you really, when it really makes you feel good, when you get too in deep into the law of assumption, the, the thing that you're trying to manifest, really, you be okay with the fact that you don't have it right now in your physical reality. Because just the idea... Of knowing that you can create it, just the idea of going in with the law of assumption, that alone just gonna make you feel good. Like, oh man, I can't find a contractor. Oh man, everybody here in New Orleans trying to trying to rob people of their money. I'm about to just go in. Whew. And me just going in just for that little wild quantum jump in here at the house that I didn't have at that time just felt so damn good till it's like, oh, oh, they got contractors, you know. Stealing people money. Okay, okay, I'm going in. Oh, I feel so good here. My house is already complete over here. I don't have to worry over here. Let me go up in the kitchen and get me some kiwi over here. Let me walk barefooted in, in my house. Let me go take a shower in my new house. The shower's already done. Let me go in my backyard. Oh, I already have a fence at this house already. Matter of fact, I have a cement one over here, so we ain't going nowhere. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I created that in my human imagination. So when things get tough in your physical reality, you want to go in with the law of assumption. You want to quantum jump. It, it's like almost like taking you away, going to another place. It's like astro projecting away from that foolishness, away from those old thoughts, which I like those old thoughts. Yeah, I created that and, and I'm God and I'm, I had my superpowers going, but I didn't tweak my superpowers too good. So I'm going to fine tweak it a little bit better and I'm going to just go in and I'm going to jump over to another state of being. And so when I keep on doing this here, my subconscious mind don't know the difference. So it has to yield this here to me and it has to move that there away from me. 
See, that's the part of, of when you really get good at the law of assumption, you want to do it. It's exciting to you. You're like, oh, I'm about to go hurry up and take a bath because I'm about to go in. Oh, I'm about to hurry up. Oh, I'm going to imagine such and such tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. And oh, wait, I already had this manifestation going with my new house. But what I'm going to do now on this time when I go to manifest and quantum jump, I'm going to actually go walk in my garage. And when I walk up in my garage, that's where my Lamborghini going to be at. Oh, yeah, I'm going to tie that into this one. And you just come up with all of these different imaginations inside of your mind and the universe universe which is your subconscious mind has to yield it to you because it think you have it already <laughs> it gets fun baby if you have any sense this is why it says in the biblical text that you should come to source energy or to god as a child if not you can't make it into the kingdom because a child can use their human imagination really really well a child can milk it. You tell a child something like this here, the child will be on his life saying, really? Can I be a unicorn? Can I be a butterfly? And they'll say, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, mom. But grown people be like, mm, I wonder if this year stuff work because you've been so programmed, so dumbed down. But yeah, that's your superpower. It's just that simple. People have told you so much that you, that, that, that you can't do this and no, it don't work like that and things don't work out for people like you and, and you gotta be lucky and you gotta work hard. So many people have told you that. And some people are so stuck low because some people told them that they ain't shit, they never was gonna get shit and they never was gonna be shit or they just like their daddy or some crazy stuff in their subconscious mind that they have to purge by telling themselves that they are worthy, by giving themselves a blessing up here <laughs> and their human imagination that they, they could seek after to destroy those old negative thoughts and that disbelief. Yeah, they, 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 those are the type of people, they might have to do it a couple of weeks, yeah. Because they got a lot of tearing down to do. They got to build up a whole new self-concept because they was told something that is contrary to what source energy sees them as. Because God or source in energy, infinite intelligence, is looking at you as if you're perfect and as if you're worthy and as if you can be, do, or have anything. And it's just waiting on you to tell it, to give it a command of what it is that you are wanting. But you're so busy worried about the bull crap that's in front of you. Or the people that told you that you were not going to attain things in your physical reality. And so you pay attention to them. And then you re re recite everything that they said. Girl, you, you heard what he said? Girl, you remember what my mama or my daddy did? Oh, that's the one. Him right there, he hurt me. He left me. He mistreated me. I, I'm, I'm pointing out all of the things that are negative in my life. And then pointing those things out, I'm getting more of those things. But the biblical text told you what to do in that moment. It told you, turn the other cheek. Turning the other cheek wasn't symbolic of you letting somebody snap your ass again. Turning the other cheek wasn't symbolic of you getting in this here mind and recreating something different. Turning your eyes away from the shitty stuff into the things that you are wanting more of. That's what turning the other cheek was all about. So when are you going to turn the other cheek? <laughs> turn the other cheek. Use the other eyes. Create another reality. Go in and realize that you're God. When you going to do it, babe? When you going to do it? Let's see. Wow, that's a word right there. Yeah. Yeah. What is the difference? Hella vegan. Oh, I like that name. She says, what is the difference from the law of assumption and the law of attraction? Well, right, I'm excited. I love that. I love it. Hey, curiosity. I'm excited I caught this. Yeah, I'm excited you caught this too. For me, the law of assumption... <laughs> It was on for me when I discovered the law of assumption because I have such a great imagination and I'm, I'm silly just naturally. Even though I'm an introvert, I do, I, I do some serious stuff in my physical reality. So it's really easy for me to play around and do pretend. The law of attraction to me, the difference is that 
the law of attraction kind of teaches you, okay, you attract that what you are. Yeah. It's telling you about, you know, like attract like, like, right? But the difference for me is that, in my personal opinion, is the law of attraction don't tell you to do no day it's going to work on you. It just tell you what you are. Like, oh, okay, I'm attracting this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm attracting this. I attract that situation. Oh, look at me. So give my attention to something else. Oh, okay, I'm going to give my attention to something else. But at the same time, you're still attracting that because it's still inside of you. For me, I believe the difference is that the law of assumption, you are, you're going to assume that you are worthy. It teaches you how to work on your self-concept is what I feel the difference is. You, you automatically begin to assume that you're worthy now. Law of attraction just, just tell you, okay, think about something different. But assumption is forcing you to feel worthy because you got to step into it with your human imagination. You got to do some kind of inner work on yourself, you know? So, so attraction was just telling you what you were. Assumption is telling you what you can be. Yeah. So once you feel worthy of walking, see, some people won't do this because they don't feel worthy of having the call anyway. That's why they know they ain't going to waste their time with the law of assumption. <laughs> but assumption, if you, if you laying in your bed and you doing this type of technique, you got to feel worthy of having the house in order to even put your mind on it. You got to feel worthy of walking to the garage door and opening it up in, in your Lamborghini feet being in there because you in there, it's yours. You quantum jump to it. So you got to be worthy to get it. So for me, my personal opinion is just that the law of assumption works more with your self-concept being up to par, making you feel like you deserve this because you're worthy and you're lovable and you're abundant already and in, in, in your 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 um your magnet already to your desires. So that's my my difference. It was like game changer for me. Attract the law of attraction was just just a law. Like, okay, I'm I'm getting this. Why? Okay, turn, increase my frequency. Oh, joy is the key. Let me just be fake ass happy then. Let me act like I'm happy. I'll do some jumping jacks. I'll listen to music. And then you go sit down after you listen to the music or do the jumping jacks or have the fake ass smile all damn day long. And you really, really low. Not yet the lowest frequency because you're looking at your physical reality again and you're like, man, this shit ain't working. But I'm gonna try to be happy though. Cause I'm attracting, yeah, I'm trying to be happy. That was the difference for me. <laughs> Let's see. Make believe equals making through believing. Yeah, I like that, Crystal. Exactly, Nunu. Glad to see you back. I miss you. Hey, oh, hey, Stephon. I haven't seen you in a minute. Thanks for being here, babe. She's literally jumping up and down saying she's so right, mom. I said, I know, baby. She's on point. <laughs> oh, somebody over there, Shay, say, doing that? Yep. Children know this. Adults, we sit there like, what? What you? What? Are, what I gotta do? Huh? What? Cause so many people have told me that this, I shouldn't do that. That I need to grow my ass up. No, you need to be like a child. <laughs> no, quit the grow up stuff. Be like a child. A child know this. A child can jump into this easy. You tell this what I'm telling you to a child, they'll manifest something tomorrow. Huh. They so good at it. Yeah, I'm curious. Do you do events? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, curiosity. Law of attraction likes attracts like. Yeah, yeah, priceless. I, I'm i as doing it as you, oh, I'm doing it as you speak, brown sugar, that's what you're saying? Yeah, so knowledge. Versus being, yeah, yeah, laughing because that was me at one time. Yeah, and it, you know, and I've been through that too. It was me at one time, but we learn and we grow in order to be in situations to be a blessing to other people. And that's a really the reason why I come forward telling you all these things, you know. This is my passion. I just want to be in a position to help my reflections because when you increase your frequency and you get the desires of your heart, guess what? We're energy, frequency, and vibration. I feel that. <laughs> I feel that energetically and that allows me to grow and expand while you are expanding. So I want you to be good at this. I want you to be better than me because maybe there's some of you that want bigger houses than what I desire. You know, 
maybe your happiness look you know a little bit more crisp than mine i don't know but everybody got a level of their happiness and i want you to be happy i want you to remember that you're god i want you to be able to be do have anything that you put your mind to just like that yes i keep telling my three this info and having someone else say it makes it really stick too yeah it'd be like confirmation so yeah children can do it easily effortlessly it's just the adults especially when we've been bamboozled and got our little degrees and we've all these other doctrines that make us think that we have to go down that path but oftentimes that broad path just like in the bible broad is the way that leads to destruction and many will go <laughs> but narrow is that path to the leads to eternal life and few will find it you know and so everybody just jumping on a bandwagon of maybe going get the degrees and working really really hard and you know being obedient and you know just getting the straight a's and that's really cool and fine and dandy i got the little degree thing too you know i went down that road but baby when i begin to release the resistance and just start being things just came flying to me i'm like what but i don't even what oh okay <laughs> i mean effortlessly try it try it you're gonna be laying down in the bed tonight anyway you're gonna open up your eye and have this moment of good brain wave frequency flowing to you and through you anyway why don't i just put it on your mind at that beautiful moment you know it ain't gonna hurt if you try and even if you're a doubter out there Go ahead on, Mr. Doubter. Doubting Thomas, I know you're here. Go ahead on and doubt it. But think about it anyway, Doubting Thomas. Think about it and watch you fool your own self. Doubt during the day if that's what you want to do. But in, at night and in the morning, try the technique for an appointed time. Try it with something simple first if you don't think he's going to work on the big things that's going to waste your time. Try it on looking or imagining a butterfly. A bird something that you don't care about a bird landing on the top of your your truck or your car or whatever a butterfly landing on your mailbox or on your window or something right try imagining that thing something simple you don't care about the bird you don't care about the butterfly but imagine it for for three nights or, or four nights in the morning and night time and i guarantee you within those four days you gonna see it but don't, don't count it to say, oh, that was just a coincidence. No, that was you. You're God. You're a master manifester. You just don't know how to fine tune it. But do it on something you don't give a damn about. I challenge you to do this on something you don't care about. You running into a husky or seeing a beautiful husky in the yard or something. A bird, a dog, a cat, or whatever. And you give it the color that you want it to be. And it is my promise to you that you're going to draw that thing to you. And then after you draw it and you waste your time, Mr. Doubting Thomas, on a damn cat and a damn dog, you ought to be able to kick yourself in the ass and be like, you know what? I wasted my little time doubting. And I'm fooling around with a cat and a bird and a dog when I could have been manifesting that car. I could have been manifesting that dream house. I could have been manifesting my, my wealth or my, he um, my health. You know, you could have been, but you wanted to be Dalton Thomas. So go ahead on Dalton Thomas and do it that way for yourself. So you can maybe conjure up some faith in yourself. Maybe you could kind of believe once again that you can be, do, or have anything, God. <laughs> Maybe you will be able to believe in yourself then, Dalton Thomas, when you do it on something that you don't care about. Yeah. Yeah. I know I'm powerful. Oh, I like that, Poppy. I know I'm powerful, manifested, but why am I somewhat scared of it? Scared of your own power? Oh, that's normal for a God. You scared of your own power. That's what the fear be all about. <laughs> exactly. Don't waste the energy. Yeah, Papi, you know it. You know it already. So you scared of you. Yeah. I did it with butterflies and I always see butterflies when I am happy in a happy place anyway. Yeah. I do I did it with black butterflies before and on two uh, two lives ago I was in my garage up in here and um on a live in my car and a butterfly came in the garage and sat on my shrine of the goddess of Shun just just moving the little uh, wings and i turned the camera around it's on my um youtube even when i be at the park it's like the butterfly be circling around me 
because I used to do it all the time with butterflies and and I also imagine that a butterfly a black butterfly is my deceased sister just coming to tell me that she loves me and that she's proud of me and so every time I go live or every time that I'm in my passionate zone I see them butterflies <laughs> yeah so anyway I am not scared I'm excited to remember yeah be excited to remember be excited to remember that you're God let me see who gonna do it. Is anybody on it? Is any of these 60 people going to go try this? Is anybody? You, could you press a number one on your phone if you're gonna try it? Or if y'all don't wanna hear me talk about this here no more? Cause I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> All right, curiosity. Yeah, I'll go sit down. I won't tell you nothing because I'm not about I'm not about casting no pearls amongst the swine. There we go. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Nunu. Hey, Mayo. I always do. Just waiting. Yes, I've tried it. It works, and I'm going to keep doing it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I am so happy. I'm so happy. And I'll come back with more. Each time I come live, I'll give you more tips until we have everything that we want. Until everybody is confident in knowing that you're God. I wouldn't come here and lie to you. I would not come here and t lie to you. I have things to do, but I, I make it a point to come on here to inspire you every day. So you, cause you know, life can be cha chaotic or hectic sometimes in the physical reality. In comparison, like a, to a tree, a tree, all it has to do is, is stand there and surrender. It doesn't have to have the resistance that we have because we have doubt and Thomases in our reality. You know, we have jobs, you know, we have all these things. We have so-called family, you know, loved ones, partners and children, you know, and they can make our, our physical reality have little humps in the road, like, but we are likened to that tree that really and truly all we have to do is be still and know that I'm God and just surrender. And things are being drawn to us just like the tree. When it cries out, we don't hear its cry, but it cries out for sun and it cries out for rain and the universe provides it for them. <laughs> it provides it for them. It takes care of it. And we're being taken care of, but we sometimes we don't see it because we have so much of distractions meaningless distractions meaningless attachments but i want you to be reminded in the midst of all of those distractions you're god and you're creating it and you can transform it okay all right practices i'm overjoyed to find you teaching good i'm happy you're here oh kitty kitty done jumped in i love you you open my heart chakra yeah hey love glad to catch you okay thank you all for being here i'm about to call the wraps i'm about to go in um work out but even that's another place too when you're working out when you're working out you can do it there i did it yesterday when i was on my in my cycling class i i, I quantum jumped the whole cycling class because it was so hard in the physical seemingly to pedal when we were i was at level 19 on that bike and so I just quantum jump so I can get my muscles toned while I quantum jump to the next thing that I'm manifesting. And I'm going to share the next thing that I'm manifesting with you really soon. Just like I waited to share this particular house. I'm going to wait till I get there in the physical reality and share that with you. Y'all going to believe because I'm going to get higher and higher and higher each time I come live. And you're going to see different backgrounds every time I come live. And then you're going to scratch your head and be like... You, I need to get this year started because this girl, this girl's doing some damn shit over there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this video was from my heart to yours, baby. Be blessed. <laughs>